Okay, we're going to do some uh, critical path analysis question here. Um, I've got four tasks that I need to do, A, B, C and D. Um, a and B are like my starting tasks. And task C, I need to have finished A and B. They're called precedence there. And task D, I need to have finished A. And down the right hand side is the time that each task takes. So A takes three hours, B takes four, C will take five and D will take two. What's important though, is that C must happen after A and B, and D must happen after A. So if I had one person doing this, that's one possible order that I could do it in. Uh, it would take me 14 hours. I could switch D and C round, um, as long as D and C are happening after A and B. Um, so that's how long it would take one person. Um, here's a timeline, it's a different way of showing it. Here's task A and B. Um, that would be like task C I could do after and if there's just one person doing it, there'd be task D, it'd take me all day. If I started at 8 in the morning, it would take me till 10 at night. Um, but what about if I had more than one person doing it? Then I could split the tasks. For example, I could have one person doing task A and a different person doing task B. And then as long as both of those are finished, I can then get on with task C. So here I've got the second person doing task C. And the first person can do task D as long as A is done. Um, then I can get on with doing D. I don't have to wait for B to be done. Now I could do D anywhere in here, any time in here. As long as it's finished by the end, by five o'clock, I won't delay the project. So D can happen anywhere in there. That's person number one doing that. Alternatively, I could have person number one doing task C and person number two doing task D and it could be anywhere in there. Now what's important is that I must wait till A and B are finished before I can do C. So C is kind of fixed in there. Um, now if I switch around who does what, so I can switch it around however I want. If I have um, person number one doing B and C and person number two doing A and D, um, I can kind of put that however I want. Now B and C, if you think about it, they're the ones that are fixed. If I change where B and C go, then my whole project is going to take longer, isn't it? Um, so they're kind of like, they're the fixed values. Now they get, they get called the critical, they're the critical activities, which we'll see about later. So A could actually happen at eight o'clock in the morning or nine o'clock in the morning. But if I start it one hour later, that will delay C uh, and it'll delay my whole project. So I don't want that. So A is restricted to that little red area there. Um, and D, as long as it, A is finished, I can start doing D uh, and I can do it any time between there and there. So there's actually a six hour slot where D can fit in. This is called a cascade chart and it shows where the different activities can happen. Now, I can show it in a different sort of diagram. This diagram here is called a precedent diagram or like a flow chart. Um, at the moment, I'm trying, what I need to show in here is what depends on what. At the moment, it's not showing that C depends on A and B. So maybe I need to draw it like that. The only problem with drawing it like that is, how do I show that D only depends on A? I've got a bit of a problem here. So um, let's go back to how I drew it before. So I can't draw it like that either because D didn't depend on B. So let's draw it like I did before. What I'm going to use is something called a dummy. Now this little dotted line shows me that D is depending on A only, but C is depending on A and B. That dotted line connects A and B to C. So now there's actually a little bit, of, uh, I have to put an extra bit of notation in here. We actually use something called nodes. I have a start node and every time I finish an activity, I draw a node. So I have A and B coming from the start. Um, a is going to node one, B is going to node two. Now C is dependent on B um, and D is dependent on A. But of course I need to show that C is dependent on A as well because C is dependent on A and B. So there goes my dummy there. And that shows that C is dependent on A and B, and D is dependent on just A through node 1. Um, and that is called a precedent diagram. It shows you what depends on what. So now we're going to put in the hours that each activity takes. And I'm going to use an algorithm to find the time the whole project is going to take. Now in these little boxes, in the top box, I put the earliest time that I can start each activity, or when I can leave the node. And in the bottom box, I put the latest time that I can start the next activity or the latest time I can leave that node. It all makes sense when we start doing it. 
Um, so we're going to start, we're going to do something called a forward pass. We're going to start at the start. Um, obviously, I start at time zero. So now if I do task A, that'll take me three hours. So now um, I can only leave that node after three hours have passed. Similarly here, uh, it's going to take me three hours to do A, four hours to do B. So I can only leave that node when four hours have passed. That's the earliest time I can leave that node. That's the time it takes me to get there. Now, of course, at the end, three, three and then D is two would be five. Four hours plus another five hours from C, so it would be nine. So it would take me nine hours to get there. Five hours across the top path, but nine hours across the bottom. So this task will take me nine hours. <coughs> Excuse me. So now I'm going to do something called a backward pass. It's going to take me nine hours to get there. What is the latest time I can leave node 2? Well, the latest time I can leave node 2, if C is going to take me 5 hours, I must leave there at time 4. If I leave there an hour later, my whole project is going to be delayed. That's the latest time I can leave node 2. What about node 1? Well, D only takes 2 hours. I need to be finished by 9 hours. So the latest time I can leave node 1 would be 7. Because um, if I leave there after 7 hours, I do 2 more hours doing D, then I will be finished in time. What does that mean in terms of this diagram? Well, here I've got B and C, they're kind of fixed, like I said before. To D, I could start it at three hours. I could start it after four hours, five hours, six hours, or as late as seven hours. And I'd still get the project completed on time. So I can leave it anywhere between three and seven hours. There we go, that's what that three and seven means on node one there. Now let's have a look at there. Well, obviously, if I'd, I've got to start at time zero. If I leave an hour later, the whole project will be delayed by an hour. So that's my whole network finished. And we can kind of see at the bottom that fixed path, which is going to be really important. And at the top, we can see there's leeway for a bit of flexibility there. So I'm just going to put my finished cascade chart on here. So I've got B and C as those fixed activities on the top there. Um, I've got A, which can happen at time zero, and I've got D, which could happen any time from three. So my critical activities are B and C, and the critical path is B to C. Now, I'm going to make it a bit more complicated. That looks a bit simple. I'm going to add a few more activities in there. I've got a few extra activities added on the end. I'm going to now use the algorithm to show you how long it's going to take to complete this project. Remember, we've got unlimited number of people to do it. Um, so uh, I start at zero at the beginning. So I'm going to take you through this as I would do it. So zero is my starting time there. It takes me three hours to get to node one. I can't leave there until three hours have passed. I can't leave node two till four hours have passed. Um, node three is the same as before. It takes nine hours to get there. Um, there's two different ways to get there, either going down D I'll go down C. Now C is the important one because that takes longer. Now what about node 4? Well I can only get there from F. It takes 3 hours to get to node 1. Another 4 hours would be 7. And now I've got to fill in this last node. If I go across the top there, 7 and 3 would be 10. Um, 3 and then E is 9 would be 12 hours. So that's longer. And the bottom path uh, is th 9 and then H is 3 would be another 12. So it's going to take me... 12 hours to finish this project. That's the minimum time I can finish this project in. So that's my forward pass completed. Now I'm going to try and complete the backward pass. So I start at the end. Um, I put 12. Now I need to know the latest times I can leave all these nodes. Well, node 4, the latest time I can leave node 4 is 9, because G will then take me 3 hours to get up to 12. And um, the latest time I can leave node um, 1 E is going to take me 9, I need to be finished in 12, so the latest time I can leave there is 3. Um, if I look at node 3, the latest time I can leave there, if H is 3 and I need to be finished by 12, I can leave node um, 3 at 9, because 9 and 3 would make 12. Now if I come back to the left, back to node 2, where's the latest time I can leave node 2? Um, it's going to take me 5 hours to do C, so I can only leave there at 4. And then obviously I put a zero at the beginning, otherwise my whole project will be delayed. So I've now finished my forward and backward pass. The reason being, I can now find easily my critical activities, which is what this is all about. 
So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about critical activities now. How do you identify the critical activities? Well, suppose we have, here's G. Um, what's really important is um, the top left number and the bottom right number. The top left number, the 7, tells me how long it takes to get there. I can't start that project till 7 hours have passed. It takes me 3 hours and I've got to finish it by 12 hours. So I've got 5 hours to do that in. It's only going to take 3 hours though, so is it critical? No. So this idea of a float is the spare hours that I have to do that task. So it would take, I've got five hours to do it in, and it only takes me three. Is this one critical? Well, yeah, because if you look at the four, I've got to start it by four. That's the earliest time I can start it. I've got to finish it by nine. I've got five hours to do it in then. Um, and it takes five hours, so it's critical. And there's no float. That's, that means the same thing. There's no spare time. Here, I've got to start this. I can start this task at time three. I must finish it by time nine, otherwise my project will be delayed. So I've got six hours to do it in. It only takes two hours though. So I've got a float of four. It's not critical. And the bottom task here is F. Um, I can start it as soon as three. I must finish it by nine. That's six hours I've got to do that task in. It only takes four hours though, so I've got a bit of a float there of two hours. So you can see that there's only one critical activity here in this list, and that's C. Now you can really see that it is because that five hours is the difference between the four and the nine. There's no spare time. That's how you can tell quite easily. In terms of this diagram, here's what the float really means. It's the, all the extra spare squares I can move into. So D, I have six hours to do it in. It only takes two. Um, and F, I've got six hours to do it in. It only takes four. So those, I can move those activities without delaying the project. And the amount of space that I have to move it into is the float. So now here's, I can identify my critical activities easily. Um, if we look at this one, A is definitely a critical activity because I start at zero and finish by three, and it takes me three. B is a critical activity. So if I delay that project by any time at all, it will delay my whole project. Similarly, C, as we've seen before, that was a critical activity. I must do it between four and nine hours. Um, if you look at D, here's the sort of trick one. It looks like it might be a critical activity because of those numbers being the same, but it only takes two hours. So it's not necessarily a critical activity just because the numbers are the same. So you have to be careful. You have to think. So let's have a look at H. Start by nine, finish by 12. So yes, that is critical because it's gonna, it's got to be started at nine. It's got to finish at 12. Otherwise the whole project will be delayed. Clearly G is not um, critical because I've got five hours to do that in and it only takes three hours. Um, and my other critical activity is E. It must be started at 3, and it must be finished by 12, um, and it takes 9 hours. So that is my critical activities. Now if you look now, now I've got to try and find my critical path. Where is the critical path? Well, it actually appears there's two, one across the top and one across the bottom there. So there's actually two different critical paths that I can take. So I have to list both of them. Um, I'm going to use the activities to label them. So A, to A and D is one. And B, C, D, uh, B, C, H, sorry, is the other one. There's my two critical paths. Um, now, what does that mean in terms of the diagram? How can I schedule my activities? Well, there's one critical path. Put that in at the top. That's A and D. So it's now taking me 12 hours to do this project, 8 in the morning till 8 at night. Here's my second critical path. So I've got one worker doing the top one, a second worker doing the, the second one. This is going to be my cascade chart. I'm going to show you where all the other ones could possibly go. So D can start there, and it's got a bit of float of four hours, as we've just seen. Um, I think we're going to put F in next. So there's D, yeah, it's got a bit of time that I could do that in. It could be anywhere on there. Um, I've now got two of activities left. I've got F, which has to start at three and be finished by nine, which we've seen from before. Um, and we've got one more task at the end. Uh, I think that's task, uh, is it G? Yeah, G. Must be start by 7, must finish by 12. There's a float there of 2, as we've already seen. So these ones aren't critical, these three activities on the bottom. Now if I had to actually schedule, so that you can see how that fits into the uh, picture, that 7 and 9 shows you how those non-critical activities fit in. Um, now if I, that's a cascade diagram, if I had to schedule this, um, so the least number of workers could possibly do this. Um, I'm just showing again there that D is not critical. 
Okay, just making sure we're aware of that. So D is not a critical activity. So I'm going to try and now schedule it so the least number of workers could do all these tasks. Um, so that's called the cascade chart. Now I'm going to do the scheduling diagram. I'm going to move. Um, in fact, I can get worker number three um, to do task F as well because that only ne needs that to be done. And I can get worker number three to do G as well. So in fact, I can get this task done by three workers um, in 12 hours.